Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Derek Flavin, and welcome back to episode 26 of How to Practice Jazz Guitar Efficiently. Now, if this is the first video that you've ever seen on this channel before, I would recommend that you go back to episode 1 and watch the videos in order in your own time. But do that if you really want to benefit the most from this channel because it's really like a free online jazz guitar course that's unfolding in this logical sort of manner, okay? But since you did click on this video today, maybe check this one out first and see if you like it and then you can take it from there. So in today's episode, I want to continue to talk about practicing our comping and developing our time and our rhythm because it's such an essential skill set to have as a competent professional jazz guitarist. And you don't want to be that guy. Dude, maybe you really don't have any rhythm. So what we're going to be focusing on specifically today are two of the more fundamental comping rhythms that there are in jazz. And those would be the Freddie Green quarter note type of thing, like a four to a floor or whatever, and Charleston rhythm. Now, as far as practicing these rhythms go, understand that it's going to be the same basic concepts as what we already talked about in the previous episode as far as really doing this type of work to help us build endurance and fluency with our comping as well as develop our time feel. And it's about having an understanding that doing this sort of work consistently over time is the only way that you're actually going to develop any sort of true feel, okay? so. The only difference is we're just going to be applying different rhythms now to the chord changes other than what we did in the last episode, but it's the same basic thing. So if you haven't seen it already, you can check it out because I'm not going to go in detail with it today because I want really hopefully the playing to do more of the talking today than my own rambly self. I still ended up talking a lot. Big surprise, right? But I do want to mention that I am still going to be playing for an extended chunk of time later in the video. And in the end, it actually turned out to be something nice, I thought, that you could use as an accompaniment or almost like a backing track over the particular tune that I'm going to be demonstrating. So, I invite you to jam along with me over this if you would like, and I'm going to give you plenty of courses in a row to work out your stuff over. So, yeah, it should be something that you can enjoy as well. Okay, so I'm going to begin by demonstrating what these basic rhythms are first for those who aren't already familiar with them. And I'm going to put the metronome on and all day today I'm going to keep it at 120 beats per minute the quarter note and the metronome will be on 2 and 4. So the count would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So the Freddie Green quarter note rhythm is pretty straightforward. It's just playing quarter notes on every downbeat. So every time you go one, two, three, four, you play a chord. So pretty obvious, but that would sound like this. A one, two, three, four. Right? And that's it. And then the Charleston, the basic one where you're starting on the downbeat of beat one, is you're gonna play on the downbeat of beat one, and then the second hit is gonna be on the two, or I'm sorry, on the and two. So it would be like one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, right? So if I play that on the guitar, one, two, three, four. Right? So pretty straightforward. Seems easy, but you know, I learned these things years and years ago and it's not like I never practiced them then but sometimes it could take years to really develop a real appreciation for the importance of practicing these things with consistency. Now in addition to understanding the rhythms you also want to understand the different variations on articulation that you give these rhythms. Okay so the Charleston only has two hits in the measure and Obviously, the Freddie Green has four quarter notes, but they're both even numbers. They're both multiples of two. So what these variations are, are basically like grouped in like two hits at a time. So basically for the Freddie Green, you would do these variations two times in a row. And on the Charleston, you're going to apply it only once to that rhythm per bar. So these are articulations that, again, the great Rodney Jones taught me. 
And it's actually kind of amazing that I never got this anywhere else before because this stuff is so fundamental. And I was even a music major in college for a year and a half with jazz guitar being my principal instrument. And I wasn't even taught it then. So it's pretty crazy. But anyway, I'm going to show you what they are. I'll demonstrate with the Freddie Green and the Charleston. So basically the articulations are different combinations, two note combinations with long and short articulations, okay? So, I guess the first one I'll start with will be a long long, which is basically having them ring out the whole time. Or actually, I'm gonna start with short short. I don't, I don't know why, but whatever. So, here it is with the uh, Freddie Green. Right? Basically what I did before. And then here it is with the Charleston. is I'll do short long first with the Freddie Green one two three four right and now I'm gonna do with the Charleston notice how it's really bringing until the next one okay then the next one be long long okay first with the Freddie Green one two three four this one to me it has its place but it's I definitely feel like I use that one the most or the least I mean okay and here's the Charleston same thing going to be the long short. So first with the Freddie Green. And then finally with the Charleston. Okay. Now, I also want to remind you of something that I said in the previous episode as well in case you didn't notice, and that's just that when you're doing all this, you're playing all these rhythms with only downstrokes. And for the Freddie Green and the quarter notes, that should be pretty obvious anyway, because everyone typically plays down beats with downstrokes. But for the Charleston, we have that and of two, which is an upbeat, at least when we start on the downbeat of one, and you still want to play that with the downstroke. That's just how it is for the straight ahead style and feel, so if you haven't been doing that already, I would start getting with it. Another thing that I'd like to say in comparison to the rhythms that we were practicing in the previous episode, you know, on a certain level, you may say that the stuff we did last episode, which was just playing one chord per harmony, basically, a lot of whole notes and half notes, and because of that, you may say that that is more basic and fundamental, and on a certain level, I would say you can't really argue that, but in the jazz guitar community, you don't really hear people talking about that as much as the Freddie Green and the Charleston, even if they're doing it. And I would agree, those two rhythms are two of the most fundamental and known rhythms that we all should be practicing for this style. But I just want to put it out there that you still don't want to neglect that exercise and you should still be working on it from time to time. Now me personally, I definitely practice the Freddie Green and the Charleston with more consistency than that. But I still do that, and in terms of how that may be benefiting you more than even these two rhythms, you know, obviously because you're playing less notes per bar, or just in whatever that rhythm is, just one chord per harmony, the space is more freed up. So that type of thing could be a better approach a lot of the times when the tempos start getting faster, for example. So if you haven't really practiced it, you may not feel as confident in that situation. So I'm just saying that you don't want to neglect practicing that exercise as well, even if you're starting to do the Freddie Green and the Charleston stuff now, okay? All right, so for the rest of the video now, I really just want to give you a demonstration of how I may practice these types of things, just so you can get an accurate idea of what it's really like when I sit down to practice these exercises, and so you can see how it may possibly develop throughout. And what I mean by that is just that, you know, it's like I've been saying at nauseum, for me, the main purpose of doing these sorts of comping exercises is to help improve my endurance and my time feel overall. 
And even though you could certainly use these exercises to help at internalizing the changes over a certain tune or just playing the chords over a certain tune, it's totally valid. But for me, that alone is not enough of a reason to want me to keep coming back to this exercise consistently to keep reaping the benefits. Where if I consider the whole time feel thing, that is a good reason. And I kind of see it almost like going to the gym where as I do this consistently, I'm either improving or I'm maintaining. And if I stopped working on my time altogether, I would probably regress over time. So by giving you a full version of how I practice this right now, you'll really see like how it may fluctuate throughout. And every day is different and it can go any number of ways, you know? It could be great throughout, it could suck the whole time, it may start bad and end good, it may fluctuate throughout the different variations and articulations that I may do, it may start bad and improve within those, or you know, you'll just be able to tell like where it's good and when it's not, or maybe when it's rushing or dragging, and so on, all right? So, I'm gonna do this today using the chord changes for the standard I Should Care, and I'll put the changes up if you guys wanna follow along and count as I'm doing it, but I'm not gonna have the changes in front of me, and it's actually a good tune for me to demonstrate this with for you guys, because I definitely know this tune, and I don't need to look at a chart or anything, but it's definitely a tune that I could probably be a little bit more familiar with, and despite what I just said about not using this mainly to internalize changes, this will kind of show me like how good or fluent I really am with them, all right? So I may make mistakes, I may hit the wrong chords at different points while doing this, who knows? But this is just an authentic representation of what it's really like, okay? So before I begin, I just wanna make a few quick points that may be good to keep in mind. So first of all, as far as the voice things go that I may play, when I do this today, I'm not gonna be using any pre-worked out ideas or predetermined sequences of voicings or anything like that, like I did in the last episode. And you know, you should just realize I can do that and I have in my actual practice, but if I'm gonna do something like that when I'm working on something more deliberate, usually I'm doing that for the sake of literally practicing that exact piece of material because I like it and I wanna get it into my playing. But when we're doing this, typically, it's really more for developing that sort of improvisational skill so that you build your endurance and fluency with it so that you just feel more confident when you do it in a real situation. So when you do these voicings, you know, because one of your primary goals is to keep whatever you inevitably play together as best as possible so that it comes out good and has a nice feel, you want to, you know, for what you need, err on the side of simplicity. So. If you need to start from a place of only playing one voicing per chord, even if you have a situation where, let's say the chord lasts one measure long and you have four quarter notes with a Freddie Green, hypothetically, in any situation, you may play four different voicings for that chord, but don't try to do anything like that yet if you're not gonna be able to pull it off, all right? The idea is to play whatever you play correctly. So when I do this, I may start with simpler voicings like shell voicings. I'm not doing anything in particular and I may take it from there. I may use multiple voicings for different things or add in some substitutions, but nothing too crazy. I'm going to do the best that I can to make sure that if I am going to do anything like that, it's because I'm confident and I think I could pull it off, okay? And the other thing I want to mention is just that as far as the Charleston rhythm goes, you know, you can also practice it on any eighth note or any beat of the measure instead of just always beat one. And when you actually try to comp in a way where you put all these things together and combine them and comp like you would in a real situation, you may use those other Charleston rhythms. But for the sake of consistency and doing this exercise a lot, just keep in mind that you don't have to do that. You could start on beat one every time and it'll still be developing what you want to develop in a good way, okay? So, as far as what I'm gonna play right now, I don't really know because it hasn't been played yet. So, if I like something in particular, I may transcribe it and include it as a PDF, but let's just see how it goes. And if anyone likes anything in particular, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll end up transcribing it anyway. Okay, so 
we're gonna get into it now and the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna alternate by the chorus I'm gonna start with the Freddie Green and then I'm gonna do the Charleston going back and forth and for each articulation variation I'm gonna do a chorus each so if I start with the short short for example I'm gonna do a chorus of the Freddie Green and then a chorus of the Charleston and then I'm gonna do the short long articulation with a chorus of Freddie Green, a chorus of Charleston and then so on so I'll try to call them out before each one and when you do this yourself if you really want to do this as best as possible the thing to do would be to be able to get through the entire thing switching between the courses and the different rhythms and articulations without stopping at all because if you could hypothetically get through the whole thing without stopping and it's largely correct with a good feel then that's a really good sign because that's really what you're working on here building endurance and all that so when I do this in practice, I don't always do that. I may stop between the courses if I'm just being stupid or lazy or making mistakes, but that's just being a human. But really, doing the whole thing without stopping is the ideal that you should be striving for if you're taking this seriously. So let's see how it goes. So I'm starting with the Freddie Green and the short short. One. Two, a one, two, three, four.
long long. I guess so so but at least I went through the whole thing without stopping and just putting in that work alone is good work for me and it would be great work for you as well okay you know I just wanted to add when I was listening back to this I realized that I really didn't think that it ended up turning out as bad as I may have originally thought it sounded as I was recording it and I feel like this could be a common experience with us sometimes and the way that you could really get a good idea of how good it may actually sound 
is to try playing along with it, assuming that you recorded it like I did. And if you feel like you could comfortably play over what you did, then you know you're doing pretty decently, at least to start. And when I played along with my recording, I realized that, you know, I had no problems comfortably playing over it. So I guess that's good. It doesn't mean that I can't always improve and it can't be better, obviously, but it's a really good idea to record yourself for these reasons. And another interesting thing to point out about this is that when I was being, I guess you can say, critical of it in the moment as I was playing, really I was probably being more critical of the voicings I was playing than the time. I feel like I kept the time pretty consistent the whole way through, which is good. And I think that this just attests to like what I always say, where obviously you want everything to be correct and feel good, but the time almost matters more than the harmony itself in terms of making the soloist feel comfortable playing over you, you know? So the voicings still matter, but it just goes to show you, as long as you're not messing them up too much, if you can keep the time and you can keep it together and maintain the form, you're doing a good job, all right? So I hope that you're able to really see the benefit in this type of thing. And if anyone has any questions or any comments or whatever, put it in the comments. And in the next episode, hope you're ready for the next episode, hey! We're going to still continue this topic and we're just going to take it into more of a real scenario when you're going to be combining everything and I'm just going to make some points about it and do some demos. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video today, I would appreciate if you gave it a like. Consider becoming a subscriber as well as a contributor to Patreon where you get all the PDFs for only $5 a month. And if you think anyone else would enjoy this content, please share it with them as well. And I will see you guys in episode 27. Swinging and playing the blues. That's what we. That's what we about. I try to help you.